Hey everybody, and welcome back to To Be Like Christ for another five minute study. If you want the free notes, there's a link down below to our website, you can download them. Now let's talk about this. When did the events of this chapter take place? Well, this follows right on the heels of chapter 25. This is still in 59 AD, roughly. In terms of our characters, they're pretty much the same as the last chapter as well. We've got Paul, he's an apostle, and he's he's on trial in this chapter uh, for some accusations that have been made against him by the Jews. We've got Portius Festus, or more simply known as Festus in the Bible. He's the fifth Roman pu- procurator, of, or the governor of Judea, and he replaced Governor Felix, who we read about earlier. Then we've got Agrippa. Specifically, this is Herod Agrippa II. He's the last king of the Herodian dynasty, or the line of the Herods. He ruled as a client king over some uh, areas outside of Judea for the Roman Empire. And then finally, Bernice, who is Agrippa's sister. She is the daughter of Herod Agrippa I, and uh, if you remember him, God actually killed him for his pride and his arrogance back in Acts chapter 12. He was the Herod who put James the Apostle to death. Now let's take a look at our map. Where did the events of chapter 26 take place? Well, again, same as chapter 25. This all happened in the city of Caesarea. And now for our outline. Section 1, this is verses 1 through 23. It's going to make up the majority of this chapter. Paul's defense before Agrippa and Bernice. So as I mentioned, chapter 26 picks up right where chapter 25 left off. Paul was standing before Festus, Agrippa, and Bernice in the audience hall, and he's about to defend himself against his Jewish accusers. So the first thing that Paul did was to express his joy that he actually got to present his case before Agrippa, because he knew that Agrippa was familiar with a lot of the Jewish customs. And he began by recounting his upbringing, how from his youth he had been an adherence to the strictest party of the Jewish faith, and he had lived faithfully as a Pharisee. He told Agrippa about his past life, how he used to punish Christians, imprison them, and how he even killed some of them. Paul described his zeal for persecuting Christians as a, quote, raging fury. But everything changed when his zeal took him to the city of Damascus. Paul told Agrippa how Jesus had appeared and spoken to him in a, quote, light from heaven brighter than the sun. Jesus told Paul that God had selected him as a servant and a witness to turn people from, quote, darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God. And Paul was obedient to God's call, and he began to preach immediately in Damascus and in uh, Jerusalem and in all of the regions of Judea. And it was on account of Paul's conversion and his redirected zeal that the Jews tried to kill Paul when he was in the temple, which got him arrested, and that's how this whole process started. But Paul said that he was preaching only what, quote, the prophets and Moses said would come to pass that Jesus would die, that he would resurrect, and he would be a light to the Jews and to the Gentiles. In verses 24 through 32, we see the response of Festus and Agrippa to the things that Paul has told them. So Festus spoke up while Paul was still speaking, and he told Paul that all of his learning had driven him mad. And Paul said, no, you know, I'm not mad, I'm not crazy. Everything that I've spoken to you is rational and it's provable. Paul knew that Agrippa was familiar with the Jewish prophets, and he was also familiar with some of the facts about Jesus. And so he asked him if he believed. And Agrippa responded, quote, In a short time, would you persuade me to be a Christian? So then the, the audience ended, and Agrippa, Bernice, and Festus departed the audience hall, and they were all in agreement that Paul could have been set free if he had not appealed his case to Caesar. And so that is chapter 26. Now let's talk about an application. Bible knowledge without a humble heart is a very dangerous thing. Now as a Pharisee, think about it, Paul would have been very familiar with the Old Testament scriptures. And yet, his biased reading of them and the influences of his upbringing led him to miss the fact that all of those scriptures were pointing to Jesus. We can know a lot about the Bible. We can have a lot of it memorized. We can even teach it to other people while at the same time living a misguided life. Now, in Paul's case, God knew that his heart was honest, that he just needed a little bit of correction and redirection to get on the right path. One thing that we need to make sure of is that our hearts are open to correction so that God can lead us into the truth. Unfortunately, 
There's many people who know the Bible well who think that they are beyond correction. And we have to watch out for that because it's extraordinarily dangerous.